By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing with my Spider Ganon deck. It is fully revised, it's green and white, and I'm taking on Redmar, and Redmar is playing with, I've called it Blue Tide, the Blue Tide. It's basically blue flyers with high tides in it. It is a super cool deck. And we are actually playing this match, by the way, according to the X points rules. Uh, so that means that we're playing Atlantic old school. And then we have that 10 point list that you see right now that uh, we're kind of restricting ourselves with. So we have to make sure we don't uh, go over those 10 points. Now, if you'd like to know more about this rule set, as always, please check the description below. There you will find all the information you need. Talking about the description below, if you want to skip the deck text, skip this whole intro, the best thing to do is check that same description. There will be several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. If you click on there, that will take you straight to the action. And as for now, we are going to continue with the deck text. And I'm going to look at my own deck first this time. It's Spider Geddon. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck that I'm playing with today, Spider Geddon. Now, Spider Geddon is basically your traditional Urnum Geddon, right? It's the same concept. You're gonna play out a lot of smaller creatures and some ramp early on in the game. Then you're gonna cast hopefully a bigger creature. In this case, it's actually a giant spider as the big creature instead of the Urnum Jinn. Maybe even a Sarah Angel if you can. And then you're going to play a big Armageddon, blow up the board, and you end up with a really big, nice, beefy creature or a lot of smaller creatures. But the idea is the same. You're just going to attack before your opponent has any time to really get back into the game and then you've already won. And of course, white is really ideal for the Armageddon strategy because your disenchants and your swords to plowshares are very cheap to cast. And of course, you're playing with four Lanower Elves. They're going to provide you with some, um, with some mana, hopefully. And of course, they don't get blown up by the Armageddon. And then on top of that, I'm also playing with three Basil Monoliths. That's actually kind of a thing that I'm trying out in the deck. I didn't want to play with Mana Vaults because it kind of felt like, okay, the Mana Vaults are just going to deal a lot of damage to myself after that Armageddon. So I chose to go with the Basil Monolith instead. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of an experiment. So I'm curious to see how that's going to work out. Um, because I'm playing with the Giant Spider over an Urnum Jin, I also have access to Meek Stone. Because I was like, wait a minute, Meekstone now really fits into this battle plan because all my creatures have power of two or less. And the one creature that doesn't, the Sarah Angel, it actually doesn't tap when it attacks. So Meekstone just works perfectly in this brood. So I added a Meekstone uh, in the mix as well. I believe I'm playing two uh, main if I'm not mistaken. So it's, it's kind of funny with this deck and maybe it's a nice idea um, for other players out there as well to sometimes just replace a staple card in strategy with another card and see kind of how does that actually work? How does that end up? That's actually the way that Urnum on Ice uh, got to be, right? Uh, my brother decided to take out the Armageddon and put an Ice Storm in and kind of, you know, took the deck from that point forward and kept evolving it and tweaking it and, and see where it's now. So sometimes it helps to take a, a staple card out and see if I replace it with something else, what is actually going uh, to happen. Um, okay, so this is my deck. Now let's take a look at the deck of my opponent, the Blue Tide. And here we see the deck of Redmar. So I've called it the Blue Tide because we've got four high tides in this deck. I think it's super cool that you're playing with four high tides. You don't see that that often. So for the people that kind of forgot what this card does, I mean, it has seen uh, it's, it's, it's moment in the spotlight, I, I have to add, but it's, um, it's an instant from Fallen Empires, one blue to cast that reads, until end of turn, whenever a player taps an island for mana, that player adds an additional blue. So it's really kind of a tempo spell, the high tide. It is pretty cool because what you can do, for example, in turn four, it allows you to make, let's say you've just have four islands, right? Nothing special. You tap one island for a high tide and then those remaining three islands now produce the double amount of mana. So all of a sudden you've got six mana and then you can cast the Mahamoti Jin in turn four. I mean, I remember people doing that and we're super excited about it. I guess in this deck, it's not going to be a Mahamoti Jin, but it's going to be a trike or an air elemental. I think high tide, maybe it's going to work out really, really well against my Armageddon deck because what I basically want to do is, um, you know, I want to play Armageddon and I just want to make sure my opponent doesn't have any lands. So if Redmar can, just before I play out an Armageddon, time is high tide correctly, play out a big creature threat, I'm probably not going to play out my Armageddon anymore because it's not beneficial for me. So it could 
create some interesting scenarios on the board. I also like High Tide in combination with Spell Blast. So Spell Blast is another card we see here. It's a counter spell, one blue and X. And X is the casting cost of the spell that you want to counter. So if you combine it with High Tide, maybe High Tide is going to help you to get enough mana to actually be able to counter that spell. Talking about counter spells, I'm also really liking the four spikes in this deck. I think they're super cool. Um, you're probably going to force spike against me, Redmar, because I never expect a force spike. You hardly ever see them. So I'm kind of looking forward to get force spiked. This may sound odd, but force spike is a card that usually doesn't make the cut in my decks. But I so like the card, so I think it's super cool to kind of see it in action against you. Another card I really like is uh, Mana Short. So Mana Short is, let me have it here, an instant for one blue and two. And it reads, all opponent's lands are tapped and opponent's mana pool is emptied. Opponent takes no damage from unspent mana, right? So what you do in the upkeep of your opponent, you cast a Mana Short. It's going to tap down all the lands of the opponent, in this case me. And yeah, then it's going to be really hard for me to do anything with my turn. And therefore, it's also called the poor man's time walk. Now, I think it's it's too cool of a card to call it the poor man's whatever, uh, because Mana Short also works great with cards like Winter Orb, uh, Psychic Venom. There are just a lot of cool things you can do with this card. And the nice thing is, in the format of X points, Mana Short is actually a pretty good card because there are not a lot of powered decks. As a matter of fact, you cannot even play fully powered because that's way more than 10 points. A Mox, it's, it's very valuable, not just in, in, in what it's worth, but also to play the next points because it takes a lot of points. So a lot of players only choose to play with one Mox max or no Mox at all. And that of course makes Mana Short a lot better because Mana Short only taps the lands and not the artifact rocks, right? It also doesn't tap the creature. So uh, in, in my case, it's not going to tap the Lanor Elves if he plays a Mana Short. So that's always a bit of a downside of the card. But again, if you play a format with no, no Moxen, it could be pretty good stuff. Um, looking at the creature base of the deck, we already kind of discussed the Trikes and the Air Elementals. The Trikes, by the way, I'm really afraid of because I've got a lot of one toughness creatures. So... <laughs> That's going to be a problem. And he's also got a lot of those flyers with four toughness, so they're quite hard to kill. But, I mean, I do have giant spiders to block them, so I'm feeling kind of confident. The downside, of course, for me is I'm playing with Meekstone, and it's not going to work against a Ghost Ship or Azur Drake. So that could be a little bit problematic. And, of course, um, I've got Armageddon to deal with the Mishra's Factory, so that should be okay. I think it's going to be a really interesting matchup. If, if Redmar can counter my Armageddon's and can kind of, you know, uh, um, use his high tide to get his big creature threats out early. It could be a really tough uh, a game for me, but I also see possibilities here in this matchup. Um, maybe one last thing to note is I also love the combination of high tide and brain geyser. I mean, that gives you the ability to draw a lot of cards later in the game. So I, I kind of like that, Ravmar. Well done. Um, anyway, this is the deck of my opponent. We've seen my deck. That means we're ready. Let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. So we've got Redmar sitting on the left. So he's playing with his mono blue high tide deck. And I'm playing on the right, of course, with the Timmy playmat. And I'm playing with my green and white spider Ganon deck. Starting here with a Savannah into a Savannah Alliance. My deck is completely revised. And I'm passing the turn here. So that's a pretty good start for me, I guess. Redmar, of course, having that Mishra's Factory. There's an island. So next turn he can potentially block and pump his own factory to a 3-3, killing my lion. But of course, I've got access to white, so maybe I've got a disenchant or swords in hand, who knows. I guess we're going to find out now if I attack or not. Playing another savannah, and there I go, I'm going to attack. So I'm expecting Redmar here to take the damage. Exactly, because I'm kind of signaling that I have a swords or disenchant in hand. Second main, playing a soul ring here. That is a pretty good card in my deck, of course, with the Armageddon, because after the Armageddon, the Soaring stays on the table. And I'm passing turn. And Retmar here playing a second blue. Looks like my side of the table is very bright, by the way. A lot of sunshine is coming in. And playing a forest. Do I maybe have a Sarah Angel? That would be pretty awesome for me right now. Turn three, Sarah Angel. And of course, pretty devastating for Redmar, unless he has got a counterspell. I guess I'm going to attack first. And Redmar taking the damage again, going to drop to 16. And just a pass of the turn. Okay, so no Armageddon, no Sarah Angel, no Giant Spider. 
So I probably have a handful of answers and mana sources, right? So disenchants and swords and that kind of stuff. So let's see if Retmar can find a ghost ship or an Azur Drake that we saw in his deck. There are his four drops. His deck is kind of slow, but he's getting the time here. There you go. So there you see that Azur Drake, a 2-4 flyer, originally from the Legends expansion. This is a version, um, a Chronicles version. Let's see, Tapperty Tap. Having five, are we going to see a Sarah Angel? There is the Sarah Angel. So perhaps I was waiting for Ratmar to kind of tap out so that he couldn't counter my spells. So I waited for the right moment. And uh, I guess I'm not just going to pass turn because attacking with the Savannah Lion seems kind of stupid with that Azure Drake as a perfect blocker. It's a 2-4 flyer, of course. So yeah, I'm just passing the turn here. I wonder if Retmar has perhaps a control magic that would be ideal for him right now, stealing the Sarah Angel. He's going through his cards in hand, trying to find a solution here. There's another Ezra Drake. Actually, that's a pretty good solution because with two Ezra Drakes, he can double block my Sarah, which would be a horrible trade for me. So right now, I need a Swords to Plowshares. Tapping one white, are we going to see a Swords here? I mean, it has to be a Swords, right? Or is it just going to be another creature, for example, another Savannah Lions? That could be the case as well. And there's the Swords. Okay, taking my time here. We're also chatting at the same time, by the way, but you don't see that because I cut away the sound. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun to play with uh, Ratmar, by the way. He's a very chill... Chill dude, and uh, he loves the game. So it's always good. And he brews cool decks. I mean, high tide, man. Building a deck with four high tides. I respect that. It's very cool. So five mana for Redmar here. I mean, if you could just find another ghost ship or... Yeah, there you go. So a ghost ship. So again, the problem is back for me. It's quite interesting to see how these two four flyers are actually pretty good against my Sarah Angel. And of course, the same thing goes for me as well at the moment where when I have two giant spiders on board, it's, it's a great answer to 4-4 to four, four flyers. Playing another forest. That is kind of surprising because I'm the Armageddon player and I guess I already have enough mana on board. Passing turn here. Redmar also passing turn. So both of us not really doing a lot. And again, I'm passing. And there we see Retmar playing his second Mishra's Factory. So we're kind of in a stalemate now. I guess we're both waiting to find the right cards. I wonder if I just have a lot of lands in that hand. I first thought that I maybe have a lot of answers. Perhaps some disenchants in there. And another pass. Seven cards in hand, ladies and gentlemen, doing absolutely nothing with them. Just passing turn, giving Retmar the time to get something useful. He's got six mana. That means he's got enough mana to play a control magic and protect it with a counter spell. That is pretty strong. But also Retmar is just passing turn, so he's also kind of waiting to see what's going to happen. Tapping three here. There's a Basil Monolith. That's not going to change much. Tapping the Monolith, though. Or not. It looks like I'm not changing my mind. Seven cards in hand still. And that Basil Monolith isn't going to change much this passing turn. There's another Mishra's Factory. Actually, those Mishra's Factories are starting to look pretty, pretty strong right now. If you could just attack with one, you could pump it up to a 4-4. Four -four. But I guess Retmar is worried about Disenchants. And, and I, I get that. I haven't played a single Disenchant. I've got seven cards in hand. It makes sense. Tapping four, are we going to see? There is a Jam Day Tome. That is pretty good at this stage in the game. And look at me go, taking my hand. Am I going to play a Disenchant on that Jam Day Tome? That would make sense. Then again, I could argue, you know, Jam Day Tome is not as good because I'm probably just going to find an Armageddon. I haven't played a single Armageddon yet, of course, uh, in this first game. Playing three in my deck. Untapping here and uh, drawing a card for turn. So play that disenchant on a gem detail and just passing turn again. 
I mean, I don't like this, you know, this is not what the deck is supposed to do. It's not a control deck. There is Mishra's Factory number four. That's kind of sweet. I think if you're Redmar, you could start considering taking the risk and maybe do a swing with one of the factories, you know. Playing another land and passing turn. I honestly think that my hand is full of lands at this point or maybe some disenchants in there as well. Remember, I don't want to play too many lands out because I'm the Armageddon player, but of course, if I have to choose between discarding a land or playing a land out, I might as well just play a land out. I think that's um, kind of my reasoning behind this. Drawing card number eight. Very strange game one so far. Both of us not really doing a lot. It happens sometimes. Okay, there's a Meek Stone. Again, a card that's not going to change much. Now remember, um, of course, we saw the deck deck, so we know that Repmar has a full playset of Air Elementals, but I do not know this, um, you know, at the time. I have no idea that he's actually playing with other creatures that have power greater than two. There is a Counterspell, though, on the Meek Stone. So that kind of gives me some information that he deems it valuable enough to counter. Still seven in hand, and um, I guess Retmar's hand is full of counter magic. Tapping. Okay, here we go. Am we going to try to cast? There's an Armageddon. So trying to cast an Armageddon here. Are we going to see another counter spell? There is another counter spell. So I'm really playing it reserved because I know that Retmar has all these counters. Or, or, well, I don't know it, but I assume he does because he's playing a mono blue deck. So two counter spells out of his hand at least. And I've lost one um, Armageddon here. Redmar, okay, playing a Triskelion. So that of course is the one one creature that comes into play with three plus one plus one counters on it. So basically it's a four four and he can shoot those counters anywhere he wants to. Untapping the Bezel Monolith on end step of Redmar, drawing a card for turn. Tapping one, and okay, there is another Meek Stone. Are we going to see another counter spell by Retmar? I guess we don't. Still, I don't think that Meek Stone is very relevant at this moment. And actually, Meek Stone works really bad against a trike because, you know, if you want to untap the trike, if it's tapped, you can just... Ooh, another Triskelion! This is bad news! So two Triskelions on the board. He can shoot the Sarah Angel now. And then he can start attacking with his flyers. That's exactly what he does. He can actually also shoot the lion and also swing in with his, uh, his one trike. So there's an attack for four at least. So I'm going to drop to 16. This is bad news for me. I need to do something here. So I've got seven in hand. Come on, there's got to be something useful in that pile. Now remember, Disenchant again is not a great card against these Triskelions. Tapping two here, and there's an Elvish Archer. Ooh, I mean, with that one trike, Redmar can take both of my creatures out. I think if I was Redmar, I would actually kind of do that and, and at least swing in with one factory. I mean, in worst case scenario, I can Disenchant. Yeah, <laughs> so Redmar almost showing his hand there. So he's pulling it back, that's good. There is, okay, there's the Sunken City, giving all his creatures plus one, plus one. Actually, this works pretty bad in combination with the Meek Stone for Retmar. I think this is a bit of a mistake on his part because then when he attacks, he can no longer untap his flyers because they're now, uh, with, they have power three now. So the Azardake becomes a three, four, the Ghost Ship becomes a three, uh, sorry, a three, five, and the Ghost Ship also becomes a three, five. So I wonder if this is really the best decision. And there he kills my Elvish Archer. Attacks here with the ship and the Azur Drake. Wow, I'm disenchanting Sunken City. Why am I doing this? I've got the Meek Stone. Okay, this is, I don't know why I'm doing this. Uh, this is just, this is really stupid. Ooh, look at that. This is quite nice. Playing a mana short in my upkeep. Tapping down my lance. But I'm still baffled by my own disenchant. I mean, this is just such a bad decision. 
Why would I do that? I mean, the, the sunken city was absolutely great for me. Finding another savanna line and just playing it out. It's not going to change much, so Redmark can now untap because, because of me. Interesting decision, and there he goes playing a Maze of If. Now he can swing in for at least four. I think if I were him, exactly, I would play a little bit more aggressive. Animating uh, the factories, also I think pumping the factories, right? So attacking with two, three, three factories. I'm not quite, so is he pumping them up or not? Anyway, he can deal tons of damage. I'm probably going to block here with the lines. Perhaps a double block on one of the factories, and then he's probably going to kill one of the factories. So that doesn't really make sense. I think the best option here, there are only bad options for me at this stage in the game, but I think the best option is just to block each factory, and then maybe Ratmar is going to respond by using one of his counters, killing one of the lions. It, it doesn't really matter that much. So yeah, I'm taking four damage from the flyers. I'm going to lose my lions. At least I'm able to block the factories. And I mean, I'm, I'm still just a little bit bumped with myself for disenchanting that uh, sunken city. I mean, this is a done game one. It was an interesting game, Redmar. I mean, <laughs> we were in this standstill for the longest of time, and then you found your trikes to kill my Sarah Angel, and then you quickly took over the game. I think that's kind of what happened. Untapping here with the flyers. I mean, he's, he's not there yet, but I think he can kill me this turn. Yeah, pinging away my Lana Rails, and now he can just attack... Is he going to just animate all the factories? I think that's what I would do. Yeah, exactly. Just animating all. So attacking with four two twos, his flyers, and not his strikes for some reason. Oh, look at that. Only lands in hand. So I already was wondering. I must just see tons and tons of lands in this game, and I couldn't get through. I think, yeah, this was an interesting game one. But anyway, now we're going to go to our sideboards, and we'll catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So starting, is that again a savannah or is it just a plane? It's hard to see. It's so much sunshine coming in my room, man. It must, must have been a sunny day when I played this match. Anyway, Retmar starting with an island. I believe I've got two planes. Sorry for the bad image quality on my side. Second blue there for Retmar, which is always dangerous against a blue mage. Playing an elvish archer. Okay, now it's a little bit better here. So I've got two planes and a forest. Retmar not countering the archer, so that's something. Playing another island. So can I deal some damage next turn? That will be kind of sweet. Or does Retmar have some options still? His deck really starts to work when he gets to four mana. Of course, he does play high tide, so maybe he wants to cast a high tide and do something. Ooh, there's a high tide. Okay, what is he going to do? This is spicy, playing a control magic over my Elvish Archer. Okay, that is an interesting move. That is, that is funny. It's really nice to see High Tide, by the way. We didn't see High Tide in game one, so I'm happy. Are we just now going to see a Disenchant? There's a Disenchant, though. And of course, no counter magic up for Retmar because he had to tap out to do that little control magic trick. Also finding a Savannah line. So here's kind of my, my pressure that I can put on the board here with two uh, with my Savannah Lines and my Elvish Archer. So potentially having four damage next turn, but Retmar now having four mana. So if he just plays an Azur Drake or a Ghost Ship, my plans are all ruined, except when I have, of course, a Swords to Plowshares. We'll just have to wait and see. Retmar, ooh, again playing a High Tide. This one is an Anson Maddox art. What is he gonna do? So he's got potentially six mana. Unfortunately, he doesn't play Mahamoti Jin. He does play with the full playset of Air Elementals. If he plays an Air Elemental, I actually have a funny story for you. Oh, this is much worse. There's a Triskelion. Oh, ho, ho. it's so bad. This is so bad. This is the worst possible scenario. Exactly. Killing both my creatures. Trike is so good against my deck. I've got so many one toughness weenies. Oh, man. Really nice to see the high tides in action, by the way. That's what it's all about. I'm missing some land drops as well, if you haven't noticed. Stuck on three lands here, which is not good. There is a disenchant. So killing the other trike, probably just because I don't want him to kill another one toughness creature. But this is, of course, super bad, right? This one trike has cost me two creatures and a disenchant. I mean, you could even argue that I shouldn't play this disenchant right now. 
Stepping three blue here, it seems. Stepping five, there we see an air elemental. So what I wanted to say about the air elemental, after game one, I uh, aborted out my meek stones, thinking they're not gonna be very useful with two four flyers and trikes because I didn't see the air elemental yet. And now in game two, I'm like, whoa, here's the air elemental. Meek stone would be great against the air elemental. Okay, playing a balance here. I've got four cards in hand. So balance is kind of a lifesaver because Redmar is gonna lose some uh, some lands here. Look at me discard a Sarah Angel. So Redmar has to lose two lands and of course his beautiful air elemental. So this is a this is a pretty good balance. I mean it would have been better if, if I could have played out, for example, in Basil Monolith the turn before or something, I don't know. But you have to do what you have to do. At least it gets rid of the air elemental and it kind of sets Ratmar back in islands. Okay, there we see a maze of if. I wonder finding land number four. I wonder if I've gotten Armageddon and if I'm willing to play it. I guess the answer is no, just passing turn you. Or, or of course I do have one in hand, but I'm uh, I'm concerned about possible counterspell. Ratmar going through his graveyard. Does he perhaps have a recall in hand? Going to three cards in hand, am I just gonna pass again? No, I'm not. Tapping four. Are we gonna see an arm again? And there is an arm again. And are we gonna see a counter spell from Redmar? No, we're not. Okay, so that means we're gonna lose all our lands. We're back at square number one. <laughs> That's kind of funny. And I, I think my reasoning, ooh, Redmar top decking an island there. Oh, but I'm finding a dual land there with, in the form of a Savannah. I think my reasoning here is I've got a deck build around Armageddon. So Armageddon should not work as bad for me as it does for my opponent. And look at this. I am finding lands. The question is now, can I also find a cheap creature to, to play out and put some pressure on Redmar's life total? Redmar is also finding lands, by the way, top decking quite a lot of islands here. Two islands already. And that means he's got counter capability online. I'm just passing turn here. And can Redmar play a land? No, he cannot. Passing turn, finding another land on top of my library. So I can't complain about that. And look at that, his hand's so full. But he's stuck, of course. Doesn't have enough mana to really do anything. And it looks like I cannot find my lions or elfish archers here. Haven't played a single giant spider yet this game. Sorry, guys. I was really hoping to show you some giant spider action. Hopefully, it's going to come later in this game. Going to go through my graveyard here and just passing turn. Four cards in hand. Redmar finding another island. I think as soon as he hits the four lands, I'm in trouble again. I mean, maybe if he even has a high tide. You know, remember, he plays with four high tides. He's already played two, of course, but he still has two in the deck. Also plays with mana short, so potentially next turn he could mana short me. It's kind of shut me down for another turn. That would be quite sweet. And I believe he's going through his options right now, so his, his hand's pretty full. Yeah, he's playing the mana short. Which is, it's just a great card. And here you can see why, you know, I'm, I'm done for this turn at least. Go to five in hand. I Hopefully I found another land to play out. Gonna go through what I have and make the conclusion I can't do anything and I just have to pass turn. And there we see Redmar untap. So he's gonna draw for turn. Again, remember, he kinda needs four land to get his deck to work. And I'm giving him all the time he needs to get there. So play the balance and an arm again here, kind of taking care of his lands, but. I, he then has so much time to rebuild. Obviously, the idea of the deck, of my deck, is different. After the Armageddon, I'm hoping to find Savannah lines and cheap creatures, put on the board, put some pressure on. Preferably even having a creature on the board that can put some pressure on before I cast the Armageddon. Now we tap four. Are we going to see a giant spider? Are we finally going to see a giant spider in this matchup? I'm untapping again. I can't believe it. The tension is real. Okay, I'm playing a lot of elves. Okay. Maybe I was like, uh-oh, I don't want my giant spider, spider to be countered and I'm playing this as lure. Playing a regrowth. What am I going to regrowth? What am I going to get back? Armageddon? I mean, remember, I think I also have a Sarah Angel there. 
I mean, Armageddon kind of makes sense. Maybe. I wonder what Redmar is going to do right now. I mean, if he plays out a bigger threat, I'm not going to play out an Armageddon. Tapping one blue. Are we going to see another high tide? That would give him six mana. Yeah, another high tide. High tide number three, right? I mean, that's so cool. Another trike. Oh, sick. Oh, that's so sick. Oh, man. This is so bad. Okay, there we see the giant spider. I mean, Giant Spider is good in this scenario because it's it's got four toughness. It's tough for, for Redmar to get rid of the Giant Spider. He needs another trike if he wants to get rid of the Giant Spider. Oh, man. Maybe that, maybe that regrowth was a mistake. Maybe I should have just waited with the regrowth. I probably had a line of play in my mind. Obviously, I don't know what my cards are. I, I can't remember, but there's a Soul Ring. I wonder if Redmar can find another air elemental that would be a big problem there is an air elemental oh there is a big problem oh man oh man this is just really bad i think yes repmar i think you got to tap to the last island as well or not oh no you still have your uh did you still have your high tide going on i i don't know anyway I think it's, it doesn't really matter for the match. Uh, I'm playing out my second Giant Spider. So now we've got that scenario that I talked about earlier where I can block his flyer with two Giant Spiders. Okay, that scenario is out of the window because he's using a Control Magic on one of them. Oh, man. This game is not going in the right direction. Untapping. And now I just feel really bad about regrowing that Armageddon earlier. I think he should have kept the regrowth in hand. Regrowth is such a good card, but I should have weighed it with playing it. I mean, obviously my plan was to play it next turn. Okay, there's a disenchant at least. That is pretty good. Getting back my giant spider. Do I have a swords now? That would be kind of sweet. A crumble. Okay, crumbling this soul ring here. That makes sense. Remember, crumble gives life to the owner equal to the casting cost. So if I would crumble the Triskelion, I would actually be giving Redmar six life. That would be kind of insane. And of course, Soaring is really good against me because I'm playing with the Armageddon. So crumbling the Soaring kind of makes sense. And now that I know that he's got air elementals in the deck, I'm also like, without your Soaring, you can't cast them because you're stuck on four mana. So I can, I, I understand the, the crumble. It comes from the sideboard, by the way, the crumbles. I mean, let's see what Redmar can do here. So he's facing two giant spiders, so I don't think he's going to attack because then, I mean, he in, in a way, no, it wouldn't be good for him. No, I thought maybe with the tri counters, but no, there's, there's not a good scenario. Okay, so he's playing a recall. I wonder what he's going to do here. So what is he going to throw in the bin? And more importantly, what is he going to get back? Perhaps uh, Control Magic could be a good one. Ooh, he's getting back the Soul Ring. Look at how important that Soul Ring is. So he's throwing away his Azure Drake just to get the Soul Ring back. Understanding how important it is in this matchup. Because it works so well against the Armageddon strategy. And now I get to untap... I wonder if I'm going to try to cast the Armageddon. No, I'm tapping five, playing a Sarah Angel. Now let's just hope that Redmar doesn't have a Control Magic. Finding another island. Remember, I still have that Armageddon in hand, I believe. So I can try to cast the Armageddon next turn. Uh-oh, does he have a Brain Geyser? That would be really bad. Brain Geyser for five. Okay, the good news here is, I mean, the bad news is my opponent is drawing five cards, right? I guess Brain Geyser is the card that he played for it, so he's going to plus four cards. The good news is he has stepped out. So next turn, I can cast my Armageddon, and I can try to gain control of, the, of this match. Okay, untapping, play Armageddon. It's not complicated, play Armageddon. He stepped out, cannot counter. 
I mean, we see Retmer here looking at his phone, maybe trying to find something out. Play Armageddon, please. Okay, okay. After seeing me disenchant Sunken City, I was kind of worried about my mental state while I was playing this game, but at least now I find the moment to cast my Armageddon. Now, it, yeah, and now I'm attacking with the Sarah Angel, basically offering a trade to Retmar. He's saying, I'm willing to trade it uh, for your air elemental. Retmar is not having any of it, though. Playing a forest and passing turn. So Retmar is dropping here to 17. So it looks like I'm kind of back in the game here. Um, Retmar did find an island straight away. That's not ideal. Tapping three. Ooh. This is fun. Casting a mana short for one green. That's just funny, man. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. I think it's really funny. Attacking here for four. Retmar dropping to 13, I believe. Finding a planes as well. So things are looking up for me. But I have to give credits to Retmar because you keep bouncing back with your mana. Look at that playing another island. He's got four mana again. So I've already played the balance to destroy two of his islands. I've played Armageddon number one. I've played Armageddon number two, and still, I mean, his mana base is looking decent. I crumbled his soul, his soul ring, but he took it back. Ooh, I think this is not possible. Only four mana. Cannot cast the air elemental, but he, yeah, you can't cast the ghost ship. So playing a ghost ship instead, and this is really good because, again, I mean, I can attack with the Sarah, but I'm not sure if that's good. Do I have a sword there in hand? Looks like I'm changing my mind. Maybe it's the Savannah Lions. I'm thinking, oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, I do have a Swords. Probably Swordsing the Air Elemental here. Exactly. So Redmar is going to go up to 17. I'm going to attack again. Is he going to take the damage? Probably. That means he's going to stay on 13. Yeah, it's going to just stay on 13. Playing another Forest. And passing turn. My hand's empty now, though. And look at that, Ratmar still seems to have like four cards in hand or something. That's kind of scary. Of course, that's because of that Brain Geyser earlier where he took uh, five cards, was able to draw five cards. Look at that, another Air Elemental. Air Elemental number three, I think? Wow, that is bad news for me. I mean, I've got the Double Giant Spider and the Sarah Angel, so that's fine. I think the problem here for me is that if we start going in top decking mode, Redmar still has that card advantage from the Brain Geyser. I'm on 15, Redmar's on 13. I mean, it doesn't make sense to attack right now. So I should probably just pass turn to Redmar with one card in hand. But what an interesting game number two. Yeah, asking about the cards in hand on the side of Redmar. Three cards for him. And he's going to draw into playing a plane turn just passing turn. He's going to draw into card number, uh, number four here, of course. And again, look at his mana base. It's like I haven't played a single Armageddon. Remember, this is a game where I play two Armageddons. And still, Redmar really has a decent mana base. Tapping five again. Are we going to see Air Elemental number four here hitting the board? Yep. Air Elemental number four. I mean, I love Air Elementals, so, I mean, if you're going to kill me, Retmar, just do it with Air Elementals, it's fine. It's probably still not good for him to attack, though, because of those two giant spiders. They're doing a lot of work in this matchup. Finding another card and just a pass. I mean, these are long and grindy games. This is not the game plan that I had in mind when I picked my deck up. I thought, you know, I'm just going to play my Geddon deck, play Armageddon, and just... Attack with my small creatures. But we see a completely different scenario in, in both games thus far. And game number two, we see Retmar now tapping four. Are we going to see an Azur Drake or maybe a Jam Day Tome? We haven't seen that yet. Ooh, Control Magic. This is really good. Control Magic is such a killer card this stage in the game. It always is, but now it's even more dangerous. Attacking with everything. So I guess I can double block one air elemental here. He's attacking for 10, right? Well, he's not attacking with the trike, by the way, so not with everything, but with everything he's got in the air. Double blocking, probably an air elemental here. So one air elemental is going to die and one spider is going to die. And I'm going to take six damage, drop to nine, and next turn. I mean, this, this control magic changed everything. Like here you can see the strength of control magic. 
And I think Redmar here is kind of thinking, is there a scenario where I can use the counters from my Triskelion to kill both spiders? No, there is not, but still it's a good trade for Redmar because he's got my Sarah Angel. I need a disenchant. Are we gonna see a disenchant? No, for a moment I was just wishful thinking, but I was hoping it was a disenchant. It's an elfish archer instead. I mean, these one toughness creatures are just so bad in this matchup. I mean, they can be right, you know, when you play them early, then get Armageddon and, and that stuff, but I haven't succeeded. Killing my archer here, attacking with his flyers, uh, blocking the ghost ship. And uh, of course, he's also attacking with the Sarah, right? So I'm going to drop to one, and then he can kill me with the trike. So I actually, I have to block one of the 4-4 four, four flyers. So that means I'm going to take six damage. So I'm going to drop to nine. Yeah, this is this is Redmar. You've won this because I've already played out my balance. I've already played out my regrowth. Two cards in hand. Okay, I'm gonna pass turn. Is this gonna be a 2-0 victory for the Redmar? And yes, it is. Two lands in hand. Oh man, there was a moment in the game where I thought I had it under control. But the good news is, my viewers, don't go away yet because we played a game number three. Because I just really wanted another shot. And Ratmar said, yeah, man, let's play another game. So buckle up. We're going to go to game number three. Game number three. So despite my loss, we are playing that third game. Let me know in the comments below if you like the third games. Because maybe I can just make it a custom to just play that third game regardless. And uh, I just really hope that I can now kind of show the deck really working. I mean, I think that game two, the trikes were so dominant. There we see Redmar, by the way, playing out a Mistress Factory and passing turn here. So I've got a forest. Redmar has got a Mistress Factory. Obviously, I'm on the play again after losing two games in a row, finding a Plains here, it seems, and passing turn. So no Elvish Archer, no Lanara Elves, no Savannah Lions. This is pretty problematic for my deck, actually. I should have like those early creatures coming in game one and two. And uh, is he? Yeah, he's actually going to activate. I'm not sure if this is smart, Dretmar. Taking the damage, but I think I wouldn't have... I don't know what's in your hand, of course, but I think I wouldn't have taken the, the risk because, you know, chances are so high that I might have a disenchant or a swords, and that's going to set you back, uh, not just your creature, but also a land, you know. Um, finding another plains, I think. So I've got two plains and a forest. And again, just passing turn here. Interesting. So Redmar going through the motion, playing another island here. Is he going to attack again with the factory? I mean, I didn't play a disenchant or swords earlier, so he might as well do it again. Maybe I drew into one, of course. It is a risk. I think personally this early in the game with the type of deck Redmar has, I wouldn't really put pressure on. He's more the control player in this matchup. And tapping three here, exactly. So doing the mana short, obviously in my turn. So you play that during the upkeep, untap, upkeep, mana short. Then I get to draw. And those mana shorts, they really uh, make a pretty good impression. Because it just means that I just can't do anything. And look at that, not even having a land drop here for turn. Just passing on seven in hand. I was hoping that this game number three would be my moment to show my, the glorious the glory side of my deck and how good my deck can actually function. But it's not happening thus far. Let's see if Redmar can now find one of his four drops. Azur Drake's Ghost Ships, perhaps a Jam Day Tome. There we see an Azur Drake 2-4 flyer with a pretty cool flavor text. If you have a moment, check the flavor text. Because maybe it would have been a 3-4 or even a 4-4 without the tail. So just check the flavor text and you'll know why I say that. So I guess Redmar here passing the turn after tapping out. So at least it's always nice to see a blue player tapping out. It means I've got some options. Okay, finding a planes from the top of my deck. Four mana. I mean, uh, giant spider? Four mana, one green, three. I can cast it. Ooh, it's Tsunami from the sideboard. That is devastating for Redmar. Ooh, and Redmar, I feel for you, man. I know what it's like to get a Tsunami against you. It has happened to me. There was a certain point, I don't know, I think, yeah, before COVID, there was this moment where whenever I played Blue, somebody would cast a Tsunami against me. And it actually drove me crazy that I, I, 
I, I added a, um, um, how do, how, what's the card called again? An acid rain to my sideboard, just out of spite. I'm like, if you can do that, I'm going to do that too. Anyway, uh, we see Radmar attack here for four, by the way, animating his factory. So I'm dropping to 14, finding a Swords to Plowshares here on the Azur Drake. The Drake is removed, by the way. So, uh, and it can matter because Radmar is playing with Recall. And passing turn here. So Redmar could still keep the pressure on with his factory. Again, it's risky though, because if I have a disenchant, he's gonna lose another land here. Ooh, I've got a crumble. That's even better than a disenchant. So crumble comes from the sideboard, and so does uh tsunami, of course. So Redmar is really in a difficult position, only having one island, and this this was kind of the idea of you know of my deck making sure that my opponent really struggles with the mana while i play out creature threats which i'm not doing so redmar finding an island from the top of his deck that's pretty good for him two blue open that means he can counter and let's see if i can do something playing a savannah do i have a sarah angel here for five that would be awesome yes sarah angel on the board this is really good news for me five cards in hand and passing turn Let's hope that this Sarah can stick. And Redmar needs at least one more land. Ooh, there we see a high tide. Is he going to play Control Magic? There's a Control Magic. Oh, man. Redmar, you're so good at stealing my stuff. Can you stop doing it, please? I'm trying to win with my deck, man. <laughs> but I really, I, I love this play, Redmar. I mean, high tide into Control Magic. I think it's absolutely an awesome play. I respect it. I think it's great. It's really nice to see your deck in action, by the way. High Tide, Mana Short. It's just really cool to see those cards. Uh, I've got six in hand at the moment. What am I going to do? I mean, I need a Disenchant for the Control Magic. If I have that, it's all good. Or another Sarah Angel. So another Sarah here on the board. And then, of course, the question is, do I really want to trade? Because then I'm losing both my Sarahs. Do I really want that? Man. Yeah, of course he's going to attack. That makes sense. I think that's a good move. And look at me. I'm going to trade. Yeah, maybe I should have taken the 4, gone down to 10, and hope, hoped for a disenchant. But I just decided to trade. 6 in hand. I mean, it's still anybody's game. I've got more mana. Okay, Armageddon. Counterspell on the Armageddon, though. Five in hand in the pass. Finding another island. Four is a really good number for Redmar. Exactly. And there we see the ghost ship. Two, four flying with uh, three blue to regenerate. Um, it comes from the dark. Tapping to a regrowth. Getting back my Sarah Angel. Or am I changing my mind here? Am I going to go... Yeah, right, Sarah makes sense. I mean, I, I could go for a Swords, of course. Play Swords on, on the ship. But it makes more sense to go for the Sarah, I think. I mean, it's, it's not ideal. It's not ideal. There is an Air Elemental, though. Oof, that is tough. Dropping to 12... Tapping five for my Sarah. Okay, that's something, but I'm still not there, man. And look at Redmar's mana base again, by the way. After that tsunami, he really bounced back very successfully. Tapping two. Ooh, there we see the sunken city. Look at him go. That's eight damage. I'm going to drop to four. Oh, no. This is super bad. Part of me was hoping that I would block so the Sarah would die. Because then I probably would have had... Oh, I am. Okay, I'm blocking the ghost ship. Exactly. I can block the ghost ship because the ghost ship is a 3-5. So I can do that. But I was hoping to maybe block the air elemental because that would show that I would have a balance in hand. Oh, man. Oh, interesting. I'm playing an Armageddon. That is interesting. And that means that he can no longer play the Sunken City. So that's something. 
but I'm still not in the clear. So Sunken City is going to die, going to bury itself. Because you need two blue during upkeep. And he's going to attack with the air elemental. Do I have a swords? Oh, I got a giant grove blocking the air elemental with the giant, with the Sarah Angel and putting a giant grove on it. This is fantastic news. Wow, I mean, I'm on seven, but Redmar, he's got nothing attacking here. Well, he's got the ghost ship, but he doesn't want to block with that. Not yet, at least. So he's going to drop four points. Looks like he's on 23 at the moment. And uh, I'm going to pass turn. Wow. So if Redmar cannot find any lands, obviously I'm going to attack again. He's probably just going to take four. He's on 14, finding a forest and a pass. Am I going to win game number three? That would be very good for my ego. Playing another forest, attacking again. More points going down. Look at him go. So it's going pretty quick now. He's already on 10. He wasn't 20 plus life not too long ago. But of course for Redmar, if he cannot find any, uh, any sources here, any blue, any islands, there's nothing you can do. Attacking again. And I think it's a good decision for Redmar to just take the damage. You can always chum block. You, you just got to wait till the absolute last moment, I think. It's a little bit unclear what his life total is. Is he on five? Is that correct? Finding another card. So he'll be forced to chum block with the ghost ship pretty soon in this match. And I think he's just stuck here. So finding another land. Just going to attack, of course, with the angel again. Or have I found something else to do? Attacking again. Oh, Redmar is on, he's on six. Okay, that makes sense. Now he's on two. I was like, how could he be on an odd number if he's been on an even number all along and I'm attacking for four? So that makes sense. So he's on two now. He's got a discard. Now I'm going to attack again. He's going to block with the ship. So he's got one more turn. I mean, if he can find an island now and... Okay, finds a land, but not the right one. <laughs> Taps it down for soaring. There's nothing he can do, I think. There's nothing he can do. Okay, so I've won game number three. Okay, at least, at least that's something. I'm, I'm really happy with it. I'm, I've got a smile on my face here. So Redmar, man, I want to thank you for bringing your deck to the table. It's such a joy to see High Tide do what it does. It's, it's amazing. And I would also like to thank you, the viewer, for watching another video right here on Timmy Talks. Now, before you go, I would like to ask you to do three things that are completely free and really help the channel move forward. The first one is to like this video, hit that thumbs up button. It really means a lot. The other one is to comment. And the third one is to share this on your socials. And if you are not a subscriber yet, so if you're new to the channel, welcome here to Timmy Talks. Please uh, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. Oh man, it was just, it was a joy. It was a joy. How often, let me know in the comments, how often have you seen High Tide in action? I, I've seen it, but not that often. But I guess I play a lot of Magic where we don't play with Fallen Empires. So maybe I should play more formats where Fallen Empires is included. Um, anyway, let's not go into that whole uh, uh, discussion about formats because there already are so, so many. Um, there's one last thing I want to mention before I go and I say goodbye to you. And that is that Timmy Talks also has a Patreon page. So Redmar is actually a, one of my brand new patrons and that's why we played this match. So if you'd like to play against me as well, um, or if you simply just want to support my channel because you enjoy the video so much, please visit the Timmy Talks Patreon page and there you can find out how you can support me. It already starts with $1 a month. And one of the perks is that your name will be mentioned in the end scroll of every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll.
Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's true. Wait, what? Oh, hi. Wow, you're still here? Really? Oh, wow. You must really love old school magic. Well, first off, thank you for watching my video. Um, you know what? I I'm going to give you another game. Ragmar and myself actually played another really, really cool game where I got to cast my Italian Aladino. So I've got no deck photos or nothing. All I can tell you is that I'm playing with... Uh, an Italian mono red deck and um, yeah it's it's just a weird it's got a flying carpet theme and everything anyway I hope you like it let me know in the comments below by the way if you've seen this secret match because uh, that would be sweet well have fun and catch you next time congratulations you have found the secret match so this is just a fun game we played it's basically just one game not even a match but it was a lot of fun and I just wanted to share it with you I'm playing uh, a mono red deck based on a card called Gravity Sphere that takes away all the flying of all the creatures. It's an enchant world from Legends. And then I'm using a flying carpet to give flying to my creatures. It's basically what I'm going to do. And there's some other shenanigans in the deck. And Redmar is playing a uh, blue and black reanimator deck, a budget list. So I'm playing a Felwer Stone here. That's going to do nothing because Redmar has no lands. But now he's got a Swamp though. So I can make swamps with my Felwer Stone. I also have a Soul Ring. Redmar has got one too. And I'm passing the turn, not finding any red. That's bad news for me. There is a City of Brass, taking a damage, tapping also the Black Source there. So two mana tapped. Oh, I aim to Turak. That is brutal. So now I've got to discard two cards at random. What an awful start for me. What a really bad start. So I'm going to lose two cards at random. I mean, okay, so... Oh, what's that card called again? I'm losing a Sword of the Ages and a Disharmony. That's the name of the card. Disharmony is a really cool card from Legends. If your opponent attacks, you can play Disharmony and then you can take over one of the attacking creatures and basically use it any way you want and you've got to give it back at the end of turn. Playing a Shatter here, End Step on the, uh, on the Soul Ring because that City of Brass actually makes my Flower Stone really good because now it can make any color of mana. Oh, playing an Aladdin. That is sweet. I think I top decked the Aladdin or else I would have never shattered the Soul Ring because I so want to steal something with Aladdin. Aladdin card from the Arabian Nights expansion, two red and two to cast for a 1-1 one, one, and you can tap it to steal an artifact. The cool thing is the artifact is yours for as long as you've got Aladdin in play. So that's just super cool. So I can untap Aladdin, I can steal another artifact, another artifact, another artifact. The thing is I just have to make sure that Aladdin survives. Another him! Oh. El Abra's carpet and an earthquake. Redmar, you're evil, man. It's just evil. Go get him, Aladino. It's my uh, Italian Aladdin, by the way. This whole deck is foreign black bordered. And playing another red source. So, I mean, I've got quite a. I do know that I've got earth elementals and fire elementals in the deck, so hopefully I'm going to top deck one. I mean, after those two. Him to Turex, all the cards in my hand are gone, so I've got no cards in hand. Redmar's got three cards in hand, and he's passing to turn here. Playing, okay, playing a Mishra's Factory, that's not too bad, so I can start dealing three damage a turn, and it looks like Redmar's kind of stuck. Okay, there is a Maze of If. That's going to be pretty good for him. So I guess I can still just deal one damage when I attack with, with Maze. It looks like I'm going to tap for mana though. And ooh, there's a Fire Elemental. There's a Counterspell though on the Fire Elemental. Does mean a point of damage for Redmar. And look at that, he's also taking a point of damage. No, exactly. He's reminding himself that he's got a Maze. Sending Aladdin back with the Maze. So that was a good Counterspell there on the Fire Elemental. And I do play with Fishers, I believe, in this deck. So I've got a way to deal with lands, but I just got to have a Fisher. Fisher, I think, is quite good. It's just a bit slow. It's it's two red and three for an instant from the dark, and it destroys target, or buries target creature or destroys target land. So you've got options, but it is five mana. Animating the factory, a factory here, attacking with both. So he's probably going to send back the factory, take one point of damage from Aladdin. Only one card in hand and a pass turn. So Redmar not doing much yet, finding another land. So he's got four lands, right? Because, you know, four mana, I should say, because he's got five lands. There's an anime dead. Ooh, he's going to get back my fire elemental. That is a good move here. 
And like I said, Redmar is playing Reanimator, so of course he's got access to the Animate Deaths, and this is really nice synergy, right? You counter a big creature threat, and then you steal it later with your Animate Dead. That's perfect. Animate Dead does give minus one, minus O oh to the creature it enchants. Ooh, Dark Ritual. Oh, man. There's a Triskelion. I mean, I can steal the trike. He's probably going to kill me. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's going to kill the Aladdin. I was hoping maybe he doesn't see it and I can steal the trike. That would be pretty cool. But then still in response, he can kill it. So anyway, it doesn't matter. At least he didn't attack me with the Fire Elemental. That's something. Oh, man. It's looking bad for me here. They're playing a Felwer Stone. And now the question is, is he going to attack? I think it makes sense to attack, exactly attack here with the Fire Elemental. I'm going to animate. I can, of course, block and tap and then pump it with the other one. So I'm going to probably trade my one factory for the Fire Elemental, which is actually pretty good. But I guess if you're Radmar, you can still use your mace to kind of save your Fire Elemental, but he does not. He's like, okay, I'm, I'm willing to trade. No, he's changing his mind. He's saving it with the maze. Kind of makes sense. That's a nice thing about the maze is you can use it offensively as well. So if you make a little mistake or if you simply want to see what would happen if you would attack with a creature and you're not sure how your opponent's going to block, you know, it gives you all this information. And before damage is dealt, you can simply use your maze and save your creature from that scenario. So that's just really, really good. Uh, it looks like we're... Just both kind of kind of stuck because of course for Redmar it's really tough to kill one of my factories right now with only two counters on the trike. So at least Redmar is finding the lands, you know, with the Felwer Stone, three swamps now, and the city of Brazen Island. So he can do plenty. But I guess he doesn't have anything in hand worth doing. And there is an Earth Elemental. Are we gonna see another counter spell though? Oh, that is brutal. Also knowing that he plays with those animates and he can animate what he's countered. Oh man. Tapping three, playing an hypnotic specter, that's a problem. Well, at least I only have one card in hand because of all the hymns earlier in the game, so doesn't matter that much. Tapping three, what am I gonna do? Oh, play Gravity Sphere. So this is the card I talked about. So Gravity Sphere means that all the creatures lose flying. And the nice thing is if you've got a flying carpet, you can still give your creatures flying. And of course, your opponent doesn't have any flying creatures. And that way you basically have an unblockable creature. It's kind of cool. And now I'm curious if I get a chance to find a flying carpet. I mean, look at the creatures on the side of Retmar. It might just be worth to attack with Fire Elemental and trade. Ooh, he's actually attacking with everything. Kind of makes sense because he can he can use the maze anyway. So this is this is kind of tough for me. Animating both. I mean, I could block the trike and the hippie. So make it a 3-3, block the hippie. And then. I'm going to use this to block the trike, make it a 3-3. And then, of course, before damage is dealt. Wow, this is such an interesting scenario. So the situation here is before damage is dealt. Ooh, wow. It's, it's, this is hard to follow. I think what happened here is I animated both my factories. I said I'm going to block one of your factories on your hippie, one of your factories on your trike and then in response Redmar used a maze to kind of save his hippie and then I could use that factory to pump my other factory make it a 3-3 then Redmar wanted to shoot it uh, but I could then pump the other one and uh, yeah I think when I look back at this scenario but let me know in the comments below I think we played it wrong I think I should have traded a factory probably for the trike, but maybe he took his counters off and I was able to respond. Maybe that happened. It's always hard to look back at these scenarios because, um, yeah, we're not having any sound and I can't really remember how it went. But anyway, when everything's settled, we see here that 
Redmar is now also losing his hippie here because I'm attacking with the fact he's choosing to block. That is interesting. Why not just take the damage? I mean, he's not that low. Well, 12. He could have taken two points of damage or three points. Anyway, chose to block it with the hippie. Of course, the hippie as a 2-2 ground creature is just not as impressive as it is as a 2-2 flyer. Ooh, there's a Nevenerals disc. Does come into play tap though, but this is huge. This is huge. Yeah, pointing out that my Gla Gla statue has regeneration, which is actually, yeah, which makes sense. It's going to be tough though for Redmar to kind of use the the uh, the disc at the right time because I've got two Mishra's factories. He does have, of course, the untapped 4-4 four, four fire elements and I to block with as well, so I'm just passing turn here. So we're both kind of stuck because it make, makes no sense for Redmar to use his disc at this moment because he wouldn't kill my factories, he wouldn't kill my statue because I can just regenerate it. So that makes no sense at this uh, moment in the game. And Redmar just passing turn because he's kind of stuck. Tapping five. Are we going to see another fire elemental? Yep. There's another Fire Elemental 5-4, so I'm kind of putting pressure on to Redmar saying, you know what, if you want to use it, use it. I don't mind, and that means that next turn I can attack with my Fire Elemental and my Clay Statue. That would be interesting. Tapping 4. Oh, Control Magic! Oh, Redmar just keeps stealing all my stuff. I wish I had that Nevenrolls disc on my side of the table. That would just be great for me. Problem is, I don't. So passing turn here to Redmar. Tapping three. There's an Hypnotic Spectre. Remember, it's just a 2-2 two -two without flying because of the Gravity Sphere. It's so funny how that changes the power level of a creature when you just take flying away. Because it still has that good ability of when it damages you, you, you lose a card at random. And just passing turn you. So it's kind of Redmar in the driver's seat after stealing that other fire elemental as well. So he's got two fire elementals, a 4-4 four, four, and a 5-4. But he doesn't see a possibility to attack here. Finding another Mishra's uh, factory. Yeah, just pointing out that the Gravity Sphere is really helping me here. And I think for Redmar, the only way to get rid of an Enchantment is actually by using the Disc. But he's not going to do it now. I mean, that would be kind of be ridiculous. So it's just going to be a pass turn. Redmar going through the Graveyard. Perhaps he's got a Recall. Or an Animate Dead, of course. Perhaps he's got an Animate. What would you want to Animate right now? I mean, maybe I've got something in the bin. He could get an Earth Elemental or... Looks like he's a little bit in the tank here. Okay, he does have an enemy dead asking what I have in my graveyard. Oh, he's stealing my Aladino. Oh, this is actually really good. Aladdin is two red and one to use, but he's got a Flower Stone and a Sea of Brass. So he can actually use my Aladino. He can steal my artifacts. I've got a lot of artifacts. Oh, now I got to Fisher my own Aladdin. That feels so bad. That feels so bad. The problem here is with Aladdin, if it would have allowed Redmar to... Okay, he's going to steal it again. This is just ridiculous. He's going to steal it again. The problem here is he can steal multiple times. He can steal my clay statue. He can steal my, my soul ring. Oh, great, a wall of fire. Just what I not needed at this time. Oh, man. How much mana do I have? If I can just find a fireball, maybe that's the easiest way to get me out of this situation. Oh, he's going to use the Aladdin. This is so cool. Oh, man. This is so brutal, Ratmar. What's he going to steal? Maybe my clay statue? Yeah, I would steal the clay statue. 
I would steal it. I get it. Oh, this is so bad. This is the first time ever here on Timmy Talks that Aladdin actually steals an artifact. I've played a few times, but this is the first time that it really steals something. And it's not me doing it. Oh, man. I mean, it's too cool to get frustrated about it, but um, I wish it would have been me making that play. So Redmar really on the verge of winning this. Am I finding another Fisher here? No. Finding an Earth Elemental. I mean, at this point, I'm happy if Redmar uses the disc. I know he's not gonna, so I'm just playing out everything. I don't care. He can actually, un exactly, he can untap Aladino. He can steal more stuff if he wants to. He can steal my Soul Ring. He can steal my Felber Stone. Yeah, he's going to steal more stuff. He's going to go to 10. He's going to steal my Soul Ring. Oh, I mean, look at how much he's stolen from me. Two Fire Elementals, Clay Statue, Soul Ring, and an Aladino. Oh, man. Okay, finding another Mountain. I've got a lot of lands. I think I've got a, if, if I have a fireball, if I draw into one and he doesn't counter it, I can just win the game. It's as simple as that. That's that's the charm of direct damage. Showing him the mountain. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's nice to know, by the way, that the Italian foreign black borders have the old revised tap symbol on them. That's why I personally like the uh, foreign black bordered Italian ones more than the other uh, foreign black bordered. Ooh, tapping everything. Do I have a fireball? Oh, -ho! this could be the win. Does Redmar have a counter spell? Counting it up. That is enough damage. That's more than 10, I think. That's Re No, he doesn't. Winning the game out of nowhere on fireball. And Redmar, I have to be give a big compliment to your deck because... You were supposed to win this game, my man. I mean, you were so far ahead, but Fireball can, it can change a game like that, especially when you're in late game. Anyway, this was the bonus match. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below if you're also a fan of Aladino, and that way I know that you've seen the bonus match. And catch you next time right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. <laughs>